<laughs> Can we get some ice cream? Sure, buddy. Which flavor do you want? Strawberry. No. Chocolate chip. <laughs> all right, all right. Can you guess how many scoops of ice cream we can take out of that tub? Are the volumes of a cone and a cylinder related? Let's explore the math behind this. Look at these two objects again. Which of the two do you think contains more space within? And how much more? The amount of space a three-dimensional solid contains is called its volume. Let us see how we can know how much volume a cylinder has. Look, the scooper is cone-shaped and the ice cream tub is cylinder-shaped. A cone is a three-dimensional object with a circular base and a pointed top joined by a curved surface. And a cylinder is a three-dimensional solid that connects two parallel circular bases joined by a curved surface. As we can see, the base of the cylinder is a circle. Let the area of this circle be x square centimeters. Now, let's start stacking up circles. When we stack two circles on top of each other, we get a cylinder of height 2 units. One circle is x square centimeters, so the amount of space inside the cylinder or the volume of the cylinder made up of two circles will become x square centimeters into 2. Now, what if we stack five circles? What will be the volume of this cylinder then? Let's see what will be the volume of the cylinder with height 10 units and 50 units. So, if we have a cylinder of height h, the volume of this cylinder will be the area of the circle multiplied with the height h. So, the volume of a cylinder is the area of the circle multiplied by h. And we already know that the area of the circle is pi r square. So, the volume of the cylinder becomes pi r square times h. But we still haven't solved our ice cream scoop question. What about the volume of a cone? And how is it related to the volume of a cylinder? Now, I have a small fun experiment that might help us prove this. And you should definitely try this at home too. First, let's fill up this cone with sand and transfer it to the cylinder. Okay, let's go. Okay, that's one. Yeah. Now going for a second one. Two and three. <laughs> okay, so it took three cones full of sand to fill up this cylinder completely. And repeating the same process with tubs of different sizes will give you the same result. And do try this at home, by the way. But what does this show? It shows that if a cylinder and cone have the same base and identical heights, then the volume of the cylinder is three times the volume of a cone. Or the volume of a cone is one third the volume of a cylinder. And since you already know that the volume of the cylinder is pi r square h, then the volume of the cone will be one third pi r square h. I wonder what will happen if the cone and cylinder have square, rectangular or triangular bases. Will this relationship hold true even then? Now let's see how would a cone and a cylinder with different bases look. Have you seen these somewhere? Let's try if the same volume relationship holds true for them as well. One, two, three. <laughs> 
Ta-da! Three pyramids are filling a prism. So the volume of a triangular pyramid is one third the volume of a triangular prism. How about you try this at home with different pyramids and prisms? We can keep changing our bases to pentagonal, hexagonal and so on. And the relationship will still remain the same. In fact, a cone is actually a circular pyramid and a cylinder is a circular prism. So actually, not just a cone has one third the volume of a cylinder, but all pyramids have one third the volume of the prisms, provided they have the same bases and heights. Isn't it amazing? 